Hey there folks, Gary Bradley here from Creative Frontiers and in this video I'm going to show you how you can create a water droplet effect inside of Illustrator using a combination of blend modes, drop shadows and transparency. If this is your first time visiting and you want to learn best practice techniques to create killer artwork then start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss a thing. So without further ado, this is the file that I'm going to work from and in the background I have a photograph of a leaf as the backdrop for this. That's in a layer which is locked away for background and then everything that I'll do to edit this document will be in a layer called Droplet. In there I have uh, four child layers and we've got uh, a series of circles really that I've got white as a fill, there's no stroke to those. We need these four components to create things like a refraction, a highlight at the top of the water droplet and then the main body of water will be a larger ellipse in there. So I've got all those components to work through. So I'm going to hide um, all of those to start off with the exception of bottom droplet. And then I'm going to select that as well. If I go to the window menu, I will then definitely need to open up the appearance panel. And then I'll also need to go back to the window menu and open up the gradient panel as well. So there'll be a lot of work in between these two panels to edit all of these four ellipses. Now, if you've never used the appearance panel before, um, it allows you to, with an object selected, that is, uh, see all the details and all the characteristics of a selected object. So you can drill into lots of detail in here. Very, very handy for this kind of effect. So um, from here, what I'll do is I'm going to go to the bottom of the appearance panel, click on the FX icon, go down to stylize, and then choose to apply a drop shadow. Uh, from here, uh, preview checkbox is always usually turned off. So I'm going to apply the settings that I got to work with this in the way that I need it. So uh, my X offset and Y offset, which is left to right for X and then up and down is Y offset. For the shadow, I'm going to change that to uh, minus one and then three for the Y offset. I'm going to increase the blur to three millimeters. What a nice soft shadow for this. And then I'll turn on the preview checkbox. I'll leave the default opacity of 75% in there as it is, and then click OK. Now, clearly, I don't want to leave the white for the fill in here. So uh, with this object selected, notice that in the appearance panel, it shows me properties for the stroke, the fill, and my newly added drop shadow in there is available to edit. You can always click on the uh, hyperlink there to go back to the same panel for drop shadow. But in this case, I actually want to change the overall opacity settings for this ellipse. So if I click on opacity, I can then go to the blend mode menu, which will allow us to create transparency effects. And from here, I'll choose multiply. So multiply is a blend mode that will make light colors like white invisible, and it will only keep the darker colors. So when I click on that, you see that we are now left with our drop shadow effect. So there's a kind of the makings of this now. So I'll click away from there. And then finally, I will lock this object so I don't click on it by accident. So that's bottom droplet. I'll then turn on the visibility for top droplet. It's exactly the same size properties of this previous one that we're starting off with. Um, but this time, I'm going to add a gradient to this object. So to do that, I'm going to go over to the gradient panel, ensure that the fill icon is active, and then left click on the thumbnail preview inside of there. And I need to apply not a linear gradient. So under type up here, this is a, a recent change in the gradient panel. Um, from the previous release of Illustrator, which was 2019. And we have linear gradient, and then we have an icon here for radial gradient. And radial is what I need here. The next thing then is I'm going to change the angle of that gradient. So I'm going to swipe over the angle value, type in 80, hit the return key. I also then want to change the aspect ratio of this because I don't want a perfectly circular gradient in here. I want something that's more elliptical to try and match the shape of the ellipse. So with this one, swipe over it, type in, 160 hit return and now it's matching that uh, ellipse shape a little bit better in there. I'll then need to focus my attention on the white color stop over here and then drag that to about 60%. I mean, if you want to be absolutely precise, you can go to the location drop down. They're broken down into 10% uh, increments in there. So that's a location of 60%. Now you'll see that the white pushes out more and has more influence over that selected object. Uh, again, from here then, what I'll do is go back up to the appearance panel for this selected object, go to opacity again, to the blend mode menu, and then choose multiply. So we're now getting this kind of, so we're now getting this effect building up here. So we're working stages really. So click away from there now. And then the final step is to actually alter the position of the gradient inside of the object. Now to do that, I'll need the gradient tool. So the gradient tool is over here in the tools panel. You can also tap the G key on the keyboard as well to reach that tool. And when you do, with an object selected with a gradient inside of there, we get what's called a gradient annotator. So you can see here now that um, we, the angle here is of 80 degrees. 
And then we also have this aspect ratio in here now, which is wider than it is tall for the gradient. But if I hover my cursor in this region here, it will allow me to be able to grab that gradient and actually pull it down further in the object. So I can just pull a little bit more black in the top edge of that gradient in this second object. With that done, I'll switch then to my selection tool by tapping the V key in the keyboard and then I will lock the top droplet shape and then reveal highlight. So with this one, uh, similar uh, in that I want to catch a highlight on the top of this uh, water droplet. So again, I will go to my gradient panel, left click on the thumbnail, and that will apply something that was very similar to what I did previously. Uh, what I then need to do is go and change that to a linear gradient. Like so, again, I'm gonna go down to the angle value, match the previous one, type in 80%, hit return, and then I'm going to change the position of the white color stop and drag it all the way back here because I want white all the way through this um, gradient. And then that means I have to go to the far right hand side, click on the black color stop in there in the gradient, double left click on it to change it. I get the pop up of the swatches panel. I can left click on white in there to make it all white. Now, obviously it doesn't seem like it's the right thing to do, but if I go back to the left hand color stop in here for the gradient, you can alter the opacity. And with this one, if I just take away all the opacity for that, I then get this appearance. So we want a nice solid white edge on the top of our highlight and we want it to fade away as it goes down the back of that droplet. And so with this one now, I can go back to the gradient tool and pick it up in the tools panel. Again, I get the gradient annotator. If I hover my cursor over this region here, I can then click and drag pull that gradient down in this region or I can pull it up in there like so. So you see that I'm just catching the white in there inside of that elliptical object. I don't want a hard edge line around here. That's not going to help with the effect. But just by grabbing that gradient and moving it around inside of there, we keep the same properties, but we're just repositioning that in there. So I think I'm about happy with that one. And then I can go to the uh, layers panel and lock the highlight. The fourth and final circle is called refraction. So with this one, I'm going to switch to my selection tool, select that object, and then from here, I'll apply exactly the same gradient, left click on there. But this time, I'm going to change the uh, angle value of this linear gradient to minus 100, like so. I'll leave the opacity set to zero, but I will go to the midpoint, which controls what happens between any two color stops. Usually always set to 50% in there, but I have been dragging these points around, so it's ever so slightly off. Well, 0.2% off in there to be precise. Uh, and again with this one, once I left click on the diamond for that midpoint, I can drag it over towards the right hand side. And in this case, I'm actually going to pick a preset in there for the drop down menu to um, try 80%. Maybe too much. I'll go back and choose 70% inside of here. And then I think I'm getting the look that I need from that. I'll then go back to the appearance panel for this selected object, then click on the opacity. I can then go to a blend mode this time of overlay. Now overlay is a uh, contrasting blend mode. So it's going to, when I apply this, intensify the color behind that's in the leaf photograph. And then it will also kind of brighten and darken those areas as well. So when I click on overlay, we get that effect. And that's for the refraction. When I click away from there. I can then go and deselect from my object. And that's pretty much it, folks. That is how we create the effect of a water droplet inside of illustrator just using very simple shapes of the ellipse tool to start off with and we broke that down into four different objects for the main body of the water droplet the highlight and the refraction incidentally if you want to follow along and have a go at this yourself this file is available to download from the show notes as well so that might be helpful to get up and running and as always folks if you've enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up to help the channel and until next time farewell <laughs>